Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, I am going to walk you through the full installation process for the newly released Pop! OS 2010. Before we continue though, I do want to give you the disclaimer that the process is pretty much exactly the same as it was in previous versions. So if you have already seen me walk you through the process, there really isn't anything new to learn this time around. But I do like to keep these videos updated whenever I can. So this version is updated for Pop! OS 2010. So let's go ahead and check out the installation process for Pop! OS 2010. On your end, to download Pop! OS, you'll go to pop.system76.com, which will bring you to this page right here. And then when you click on the download button, you will actually have two options. Actually, you'll have several options. You can install Pop! OS 2004 if you prefer to be on the previous release. But for our purposes, we are installing Pop! OS 2010 and we have normal 2010 and 2010 with NVIDIA. So if your rig has an NVIDIA card, then you should download the NVIDIA version. If your machine does not have an NVIDIA card, then you can download this normal version right here. So my system has the NVIDIA version, so that's what I'm downloading, and that'll give you an ISO file as you see here. So what you could do is go ahead and save it. I'll click OK, and then I'll wait for that to finish. In the meantime, if you don't already have a preferred method for copying the ISO to a flash drive to create bootable media, then what you could do is download USB Imager, which is available right here. I will have a link to this in the description below. I also have a video that is going to be released very soon that will walk you through the process of using USB Imager if I don't already have that up on my channel. Now, once you've booted your computer from the Pop! OS installation media, this is the first screen that you will see right here where it's asking you to select your language, and then your location, and then also your keyboard layout as well. And you could just go ahead and change these to whatever makes sense for you or whatever you prefer. It's pretty straightforward so far. And then we get this option right here, which is asking us what kind of install we would like to perform. We should make sure that everything is working fine before we go ahead and replace our current operating system. Now before we actually do install a Pop! OS or any Linux distribution for that matter, we should always make sure that everything is compatible first. And since we are already booted into Pop! OS at this point, we can actually go ahead and test it right now. So for example, we can connect to Wi-Fi, we could fire up a web browser, we could listen to audio, we could try an external display, and if all of your hardware works, you could go ahead and continue. But if you have any problems, you might need to do a quick Google search. I always recommend that everybody test the compatibility first so you don't actually wipe out your working operating system with one that doesn't work. Now, Pop! OS has great compatibility, but again, it's just a good idea to make sure. On the upper right-hand corner of the screen right here, we have an option to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm already connected to mine. But basically all you do is just click on that and then select network and it's going to show a list of the networks in your general vicinity and you should definitely make sure that you are able to connect to wi-fi before you continue which will tell you whether or not your wi-fi card on your computer is compatible as you can see i'm connected to mine so all systems are go on my end in addition to that we can open up a web browser and then we can visit any website which will help you test your video quality as well as whether or not your sound card is working. If all of that checks out, we should be good to go. Now it goes without saying, but I have to give you yet another disclaimer, and that is that you should have by now backed up all of your files and settings or anything that's important to you on your computer before you continue because I am going to show you the process of a clean install which will wipe out everything that's currently on your hard drive. So I will select the clean install option. It's asking me which disk I would like to install Pop! OS on and I only have the one right here. And then I will click this button that says erase and install so there should be no question about the fact that this is going to wipe out everything. Now assuming that you're okay with that, we'll go ahead and click on that. 
And then we have an option to encrypt the drive. Now, I do recommend this. In my test, it doesn't really lower performance unless you have like a very old machine or something like that. Encryption is just a good idea because it gives you data security at rest, and that's pretty important. So I will click on this Choose a Password button. And my password is a bit weak, but this is just a demo, so I don't care. On your end, just make sure that you have a really good password and that you don't forget it, because if you do, there is no way to retrieve your data. There is no backdoor into this system. So I will set the password. And now Pop! OS 2010 is installing on my computer. So what I'm going to do is let this finish and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now the installation is complete. So what I can do is restart into the new installation by clicking on the green restart button. And now I've booted into the new installation. I am now running Pop! OS 2010 off the hard drive. We have this welcome screen right here. And we could choose our keyboard layout if it's anything other than the default. Now here we get an option to connect to our Wi-Fi network if we have one. Now note that I did connect to Wi-Fi during the installation process, but those settings do not persist into the new installation, so we have to do that again. I will click on my network. Type in the password. And we can see that the connection is successful. Location services are enabled by default. If you don't like that, you can disable that here. And location services are useful for map utilities and things like that. So I'll leave that up to you. And here we can set our time zone. It's going to try its best to guess where you are which is probably not going to be extremely correct, unless maybe you are in New York in this case. I'm actually in Michigan, so I will click on Michigan to get this red dot close to Detroit, which I was able to do. But on your end, you just click on the map wherever you happen to be to set the time zone and locale settings accordingly. On this screen, we have a list of some online services. If you use any of these online services, then you can sign in to any of those here. I'm not going to show that off, but this allows you to integrate various services into Pop! OS, and that might be of value if any of these services pertain to you. I'll skip this for now. And then at this screen, we put in the details for our user account. I'm just going to keep it simple. And then we set the password. Hopefully your password is better than mine, but this is just a demo. And now we're all set. We can go ahead and use our new installation. We should be ready to go. And now here we have the default Pop! OS 2010 desktop all set and ready to go. You can click on activities up here on the upper left hand corner of the screen to access our applications such as Firefox, for example. And as you can see here, everything is working just fine. So there you go. That was my walkthrough for the installation process of Pop! OS 2010. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.